Uh, comedians, I think a lot of people do it for a lot of different reasons. A lot of people want that acceptance by an audience. Some people just feel a, a rush entertaining people. Um, some people, I've had many comedians who are cancer survivors and said, now that I've passed that scare, I want to do something really entertaining and fun with my life. Or people who have, are, are out of prison and now this is a this is something that they can do uh, without needing a college degree or going through a whole lot of training or school. There's no barrier to entry to stand-up comedy. You can show up and if you're good on those two minutes on the open mic, you'll get seven minutes and then you can get ten minutes at a club. Uh, it's, it's really cool that it's the meritocracy is just whoever laughs and gets the most laughs. Not to sound all like, you know, extra deep for no reason, but it's just like, I've wanted to be the stand-up since I was like three years old. It's the concept of being like, oh wow, people are listening to that one guy and they all, he makes them laugh. It's like, I wanted to be that guy, you know? Like, I remember when I was a kid, like, I heard a Sinbad record of all things. It was, it was crazy at the time, but like, I heard that. I remember I watched Dave Chappelle on Star Search and I was like, I want to do that. But then I forgot about it for a while, but it was like, it's the subconscious thing of like, yo, just work towards just work towards being a comedian. Work towards being a comedian. It's like that's just you know, it's what I want to do. It's what I've always wanted to do. And it was such a cathartic experience that after years of no friends with the world's worst stutter, I decided I had to do this comedy thing. Being a student of it and now being able to speak in public. I don't it's in me. It's like something I've been wanting to do since I was a kid. And I really didn't do it. I didn't start till I was 30 years old. But I, I got in, I was into acting. I would perform as a kid in the backyard with, with my friends. You know, and we'd, we would uh, act out movies that we saw. But I always wanted to do stand up. And then, especially when I got to junior high, high school, and I was watching a lot of stand up, it was like something I really, really wanted to do. But I got into college and I was a theater major and I got into acting, into films. And uh, then finally, when I was 30, I took the shot, went to an open mic. But for some reason, like in my mind, I was like, that's for some, that's a thing that I don't do, I'm an actor. Like, uh, because the people who do stand up are like born to do it and they're like, you know, they've known it their whole lives and that's just not me, I guess. Even though deep down I kind of wanted to do it. And I even remember I was dating this chick and I was like, I'm kind of thinking about doing stand up. She's like, no. Like, you're a theory actor, be, be an actor or whatever. I feel like it's it's weird actually. I always say that it's something I think everyone should try once. Just because when people ask me about it, I say, you know, it's simultaneously the scariest and coolest thing I've ever done. Um, but it really is, you know, there's no other art form like it. Um, just because it's just you. Like there's no, you can't distract people with like other band members or like pretend that they're not there. Like the audience is such a part of the show and, and it's, you can't fake it. Like you have to just be yourself, and uh, and because of that, it's just such a liberating experience. You know, it's like it's like streaking. It's, you feel you feel naked in front of a crowd, literally. It's like it's like you have all of this stuff in your head, and there's it's really there's nothing else to do with it. You know, it's thoughts that you have, it's things that just come out. You know, it's like what do you do with this? It's like you get on the mic and you talk it out and you talk to people about it. It's just. It's just in there. Well, I do stand-up comedy because it's to the point where it's a compulsion <laughs> and a goal. I think it starts as a curiosity, then veers into hobby, becomes sort of an obsession, and then then it becomes compulsion. <laughs> so that's where I'm at right now. indifference for the most part um, you know it's something I had stressed that I wanted to do when I was like 17 or 18 and they were like fuck you you're going to college um the same way they react now kind of like it's not like they're real against it but at the same time they're like how do you make money you know what I mean that's what I think most parents they don't really care as long as you're like doing well financially they loved it they, they're super funny. Everybody in my family is really funny. And we grew up watching, my dad was into W.C. Fields and Mae West and the 
the Marx Brothers and my mom was into Flip Wilson and laughing and that kind of stuff so they were really into it actually and I studied art in school so it wasn't any I wouldn't be any worse off <laughs> I mean, it's not like coming out of the closet or telling them you're a drug addict. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. I don't think there was like a memorable. Um, well, I mean, I was 34, or 35 when I, or 30 something when I started. Uh, so, I don't know. That's there was really nothing notable that I remember. Uh, it actually came out um, kind of an interesting coincidence at the time. My father and stepmother were running a restaurant in my hometown, and another comic who I worked with, you know, quite a bit. He used to go in there, and he's friendly with them. And one day, he just mentioned offhand, like, "Oh yeah, Wes is really funny." And that night, I got a phone call, like, "Yo, are you doing stand up?" I mean, this is like two, three years in already. <laughs> and so, you know, that led to one thing, and then my mom found out, and uh, it was kind of, you know, it was it was interesting reaction. Like, you know, they were supportive. They were very much, you know, their reaction was, why didn't you tell us? <laughs> like, you know, and I was like, because I suck, and I don't want you to see that. I think they think that it's a phase that I'm going through. They don't realize that it's like this, a bust. Like, I'm not, I'm not in it, just, I'm not going to decide at one point that, oh, comedy's not for me, I'm going to go get a full-time job, which, I mean, I have anyway. I work a day job, but that's not going to happen. Like, I'm doing this, you know, I'm, I'm all in for this. Death of glory, all or nothing, like, I want to be a comedian. But in general, uh, I don't. I don't really think they like it at all. I think they want me to get married and have kids, and I don't really. I'm not super interested in that, to be honest. <laughs>
a good closer. I was smart enough to know you need a good opener and a good closer. So I saved my best joke for last, which was a really like kind of dark, mean joke, but the New York comedy scene is dark and mean, especially the open mic side of it. So the joke was, uh, I uh, hate it when a celebrity gets caught, uh, no, sorry, I hate it when a celebrity gets sick and uses it to enhance their celebrity. They just use it to get more famous. Like I saw recently that Sheryl Crow had a terminal illness. But luckily for her, it went away. Isn't it nice to know that even cancer only has a passing interest in Sheryl Crow? <laughs> um, my first open mic. Well, it's weird because I actually didn't plan on going up the first time. Um, I was taking a comedy writing class and I'd heard so much about open mics, so I asked the teacher, I was so nervous to go up for the first time, but I asked the teacher uh, to bring me to an open mic just to see what it was like. Um, and I told him, I don't want to go up, I just want to like see what the experience is like, kind of get my bearings about it. Um, and then we got there, and I sat and watched for a little while, and I, I must have had some sort of look on my face, so like of a, mm, like I want to do this, because my teacher looked at me and just goes, yeah, it doesn't look that hard once you see other people doing it, does it? And I was like, oh, I guess, I don't know, whatever. But uh, he knew that I had five, minute, five minutes of stand-up just written, like typed up. Um, so he just got up, walked away, and came back and was like, you're on in five people. Which, of course, I was just like, oh my god! Like, now I actually have to do it! Um, and my first set was an absolute disaster. Uh, I actually, I did get some laughs, but I was so nervous. I like, I kept the microphone in the stand. I was reading off of a typewritten page. Um, like, it, like this. Like, it was literally like giving a history report in high school. It was great. I mean, I got laughs. I also didn't get laughs, um, but my first, like, I don't even remember my first real open mic. Um, I mean, do an open mic is like, um, it's like when you, you, you get shit faced for the first time and um, you regret it the next day and like you're just sick and you say, I'm never gonna do this again. And then like a day later, you can't wait to do it again. Well, we, we actually have 350 to 400 different comedians a year play this club. So we see quite a bit. The thing they all have in common, the ones who make it, are the ones who are willing to work the hardest. You can't do this by having one great 10 minute set and then you get on HBO. It really is the 10,000 hours of practice before you know what you're doing. Oh, you gotta pay attention. I mean, it's, it's all observation, because it's, it's like a filter. It's like everybody's looking at the same thing, but then the comedian says it a certain way, and you're like, oh yeah, that's true, that's right. I do kind of feel like that, or it, you know, that is what I'm looking at. So mainly it's, it's observation, you know, if you're paying attention to things outside of you, as opposed to, you know, just wanting to tell jokes about your dick all the time. In my opinion, a good comic is somebody who can totally be themselves and totally talk about everything. Everything they, they they can totally say all their opinions on things, and you might not agree, but you can see where they're coming from and they make you laugh while they're doing it. Like to the point where it's just like they can start a sentence and you get excited. Like where are they gonna go with this? And you're so excited for that. That means like that's what a comic is. Somebody that's like I can be funny. I can be funny in all brains of motion. I can be mad to be funny. I can be sad to be funny. I can be whatever and still be funny about it. Uh, there's a lot of things. I mean, I think there's a lot of different approaches to comedy, and it really just depends on where you want to go with it. But I mean, what I like personally is I, I like something that's honest. You know, I I like something that, like, I hate. I, once in a while you can see a comedian on stage and you can tell he's telling a made-up story, and I hate that. Um, so I, I think something that's honest is great, uh, and maybe something that, like, doesn't... It makes you think about something in a different way, or like a way that, you know, didn't occur to you before. Something that challenges you. Like, I think, like, shit jokes have their merit and they're fun, and I guess, like, I, I don't want to be too... 
like it's kind of it gets boring when you're too political as well but I think what I like in a comic is a nice mix of like stupid shit jokes and also you know something challenging something personal something that tells something that tells a story that like only you can tell you know I think that's that's what's important I mean it's so different for everyone I mean the, that's the stand up I mean whether, not to elevate it beyond what it is, it's telling jokes to people, but it is an art, you know, you know, we're all artists, everybody's different, there's no one style. I think things that always help people are uh, honesty, that, you know, you can't go wrong with that. Um, a definite good sort of self-evaluation, like knowing when you did poorly and being able to go back and think, why is that that I didn't get the reaction that I thought I was going to get? You know, so recognizing when you do really well, recognizing when you do really poorly, uh, a willingness to uh, take risks. You're going to fail. There are going to be many, many nights when it's just not going to work for you. No one's going to laugh. And you're going to feel pretty bad about yourself after that. And you just need to push forward, go through that, you know, learn what you can and keep on going. So, I mean, it's a lot of different elements. And the ability to listen and observe, just be in your environment and, you know, why do I find the things that I find interesting interesting? and you know what in that is funny and that we can really you know, be related to other people definitely work ethic is huge your work ethic professionalism um you ha don't be in it for the wrong reasons like i mean everyone gets in it to a certain degree because they want they want their opinions um validated they want other people to be like oh that guy's right that is true that is funny like i agree with him like essentially i feel like that's what we're all looking for and you know, everyone, no one's gonna say like, oh, I didn't get into comedy because I was hoping I could fuck some girl after the show. I mean, I, I, at least that's my opinion. <laughs> but, I mean, that, don't, don't get in it just for money and fame. Because if you do that, you, and I've heard this from a ton of other comedians, is that you won't make it. Well, I think a good comedian is funny. And it doesn't matter really how he gets there. I mean, there could be good comedians who, have, you know, it, it comes fairly natural to them. They're not doing it that long. They're just naturally funny people, good personalities. But I think you have to, you have to take it seriously, and uh, you you learn from mistakes. And so I think a good yeah, good comedian is funny, self-aware, aware of what's happening in the room, and not afraid. I think that's the big thing. Um, no. There's some. If you don't have it, you might. You don't have it. No. I think yes and no. Yes and no. You know, I kind of do. Most people, most of my peers don't. Yeah. I didn't. I wasn't. Uh, that's a hard question. I'd probably have to say yeah. Um, yes, there's, I do think there's a craft that you can learn, definitely, but I, I do think a lot of people are innately funny. Uh, I do actually, I've seen, I've seen people who aren't that funny, like become funnier over the course of years. You, I'm not sure if you can learn to be funny, you can definitely learn to be a better comic. That's, you know, those two might be two different things. I mean, if you have no sense of humor at all, uh, it's probably not gonna work out for you. I don't know if you could teach somebody who's unfunny yeah, yeah. to be funny, because for me, it's a natural flow, but I think you can definitely improve as a stand-up or like a sketch comedian, definitely. Um, there's a girl, I saw her at one of my favorite mics back in LA. I saw her, she was just like, it was just bad. It was like, she was nervous, she was stuttering, she was like, sauced up and I was like this is awful and now she's like my favorite female comedian she's absolutely I don't know if it was nerves or what but I mean there are people that you see and you're like this is freaking awful and then you turn around and it's like wow what happened so I mean I guess it's possible I mean can everybody be a comedian absolutely not absolutely not but I do feel like you can learn points I mean it's like Jennifer Lopez she knows how to sing but she can't sing you, with any talent, you need to have the raw talent. You need to have the ingredients 
um, but also with any talent comes you know responsibility of learning um, the craft. There's comedy classes, but I don't think that they teach you how to be funny. I think that they teach you structure of writing jokes. Um, I think that if you immerse yourself into it, you can get to a point where you know what is funny or what makes things funny. I've seen a lot of comedians who have had very, very slow learning curves become very good at the end of it. We have some comedians who took 10 years before they were just okay. And other comedians who are great from day one and sort of stay at that level. So the, the real question is who's going to put in the extra effort to keep moving up as opposed to just being satisfied with being a local MC or a, a headliner in the suburbs or whatever.